take a deep breath and breathe out releasing him in this place so that not only would he dwell in us but we would dwell in his presence things that he wants to reveal <clears throat> when we dwell in his presence. That can only be revealed when we dwell in him. Not only when he dwells in us, but also when we dwell in him. Spirit, we thank you for your presence here. And we now release the power for healing. We now release the power for ability to us to receive revelations from you. that you would lead us closer and closer to Jesus as Jesus said you would do comfort those that need comforting guide those that need guidance correct those that need correction but on all of that guide us closer and closer to Jesus we thank you Holy Spirit Scripture says that the good work that God has started in us, He is faithful to finish it, to bring it to completion. And I believe there are people here today in whom God has started something. And there may be disappointments of why it's not yet finished or we're not seeing the results as fast as we want to see them but there is a process but nevertheless scripture tells us that the good work that he has started in us he is faithful and able to bring to completion And I want to share this quick part of the, the journey that Jesus was on. I believe God has given a prophetic word here tonight to encourage, to uplift, to build, to equip, and to empower. That he will finish the good work that he has started. In Matthew chapter 9, from verse 27, if you have a Bible, you can open them. If not, you can look it up later. You will have this recorded, I think. Yeah? Amen. Now, Jesus was always on the journey from somewhere to somewhere. And during the travel, he would always interact with people and things would take place healings, miracles, right? But he was always going somewhere from point A to point B. And so there's the same thing that's happening here. Jesus is going somewhere. 
He was in a town. There were miracles happening. Someone was being healed. The dead were rising. And then in Matthew 9, 27, it says this. When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. Actually, that's not how they were saying it. There's an explanation mark. They're saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. They wanted to get his attention as he was passing them by. And from reading further, we see that he didn't give them their attention. He kept them ignoring their cry. Until, verse 28, it says, And when he had come into the house, the two blind men came to him, saying, or came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. They had touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be to you. And their eyes were open. I'm going to stop there. There is a small journey here. It says that when Jesus departed from where he was at, two blind men were following him, crying out, Son of David, have mercy on us. Son of David, have mercy on us. Son of David, have mercy on us. He didn't stop when they wanted him to stop. He kept going to where he was going. It says that he didn't pay attention until he got to the house that he was walking to. So many times we want Jesus to stop and pay attention to attend to what we have. In our time of need. But Jesus wants us to have a little bit of more faith. To follow him to where he is going. Because that's where he wants us to be. To receive. And ask us at that time. Do you still believe. That I can do it. Right he asked them. Do you believe that I'm able to do this? Because I didn't answer you right away. I didn't respond to you when you wanted me to respond. Can you imagine two blind men following somebody, not seeing where they're going? Two, one blind man leading another. But Jesus wanted them to get to where he was going. To see if they would still believe that he is able to do this. Notice that every time Jesus healed the blind, he always asked, what do you want? And they always would answer the same, I want to see. I want to have sight. He didn't ask them here what they wanted. Because he already knew. He already knows what you want he already knows what's in your heart because he put it there he already knows what he wants is to see whether or not we're willing to follow him where he is leading us in order to build our faith up it's easy to receive when we say it when we want it because that's when we think we need it. But Jesus says, no, it's better for you when I give it to you in my time. I just need you to keep following me there. I believe that the Holy Spirit is telling you you're on the right path. But don't stop asking and shouting, Son of David, have mercy on us. Keep following me. I'm leading you somewhere. We're almost there. But when you get to where I'm going, because there are what's where I need you to follow me, that's where I'll bless you.
So the disappointments that some of us may have of why we're not seeing what God has promised is because we haven't yet gotten to that house where he's at. Whatever that place may be in your life, wherever that point of destination is, it's near. Get there. It'll be in the moment when it's going to be the hardest to believe that he can do it because he hasn't done it yet according to our timeline. But he will do it. And he said, do you believe that I can still do this? They said, yes, Lord. And again, because he already knew what they wanted, he just touched their eyes and their eyes were open. He didn't ask them what you want. He didn't make the request, no. He just said, okay. It touched their eyes. He already knows what you want. We just got to get to where he is leading us. That time was short. It's near. I know it's near. Otherwise, he wouldn't give this word to take you on another 10 year journey. For some, it may be days, for some, it may be weeks, for some, it may be just a few more months. <clears throat> but to make this journey lighter and more exciting. Holy Spirit wants to activate something in us. Yes. So if you would just close your eyes. We're going to pray. You don't have to say it out loud. You can just say it in, inside in the inner voice. But if you'll say it with faith, you will see results today. I promise you that. And I don't say that lightly. So if you lay your hands on your head, I'm going to pray this. Just say, Father, I bless my mind. It says in your word that just as the heavens is above the earth, so are your thoughts above my thoughts. So, Father, I bless my mind and I ask for your thoughts to become my thoughts in the name of Jesus. Now lay your hands in your eyes. Say, Father, Jesus said, he doesn't do anything unless he sees you do it. So, Father, I bless my eyes that I may see you do before I do. So that I may also see people the way you see people. Let your eyes become my eyes in the name of Jesus. And lay hands on your ears. So Father, Jesus also said, he doesn't say or speak anything unless he hears you say first. So, Father, I bless my ears so that I may hear you. In Jesus' name. I'll lay your hands on your lips. Jesus says, the words that I speak are spirit and life. So, Father, we bless our lips that the words we speak from day, this day forth may be spirit and life into the lives of those around us and our own homes. So Father, I bless my mouth that it may speak out of the abundance of my heart. In Jesus' name. Now lay your hands on your heart. Father, it says that our mouth speaks from the abundance of our hearts. So we ask that you would shape our hearts, mold our hearts, 
heal our hearts. Shape our hearts. That our hearts may become a bottomless well of your blessings, your anointings. In Jesus' name. Now put your hands together with it. Thank you, friend. Father, it says that anyone who believes and is baptized, yes. they will lay hands on the sick and they will be made well. Yes. So, Father, let that power of healing flow through these hands in the name of Jesus. That when these hands embrace another, they feel loved. They feel welcomed. And they will feel your fatherly embrace. Yes. Especially when it is our children. Yes. In Jesus' name. Jesus. So Holy Spirit, let this prayer be an activation in all those things. In all your giftings. In the name of Jesus, I just release that right now. journey be light and adventurous and just as Jesus was going from point A to point B and was healing along the way was encouraging along the way was prophesying along the way was delivering along the way let us have the same journey as we're following you to the house where you are where you want us to be within that journey let us heal those who are sick let us give hope to those who have lost hope let us heal those who are broken hearted and are sick. Let us deliver those that need freedom from bondage in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you all honor and glory. Son Jesus Christ and that's just Amen. 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 So we thank you, Lord. A new level of faith. We are rising, we are rising, rising to a new level of faith. We should not be dormant and laying around. We should rise up to a new level every day. Do not be satisfied where you're at today. Start moving towards where God wants you today. And do not be satisfied where He moved you today. Start be more and more moving to more than where He wants you to be. We, we, we walk in the levels of life where we release the ability of God. But the words of our mouth, the first step of faith is actually speaking. New levels, new levels every day. So don't sit there and say, oh, I'm Christian, and that's not. Let us, let us be moved. Move with the Holy Spirit. Don't go somewhere and ask, Holy Spirit, come over here. And don't let Holy Spirit go over there and say, all right, you're ready to come. Go with Him. There's a saying, a great man of God says, I don't make a step unless he makes a step. And he doesn't make a step unless I make a step. So we're united with him in one spirit. My spirit is obedient to his spirit. I am created in his image. I am created in his likeness. 
Let's act the way he acts. Let's do what he does. Let's think the way he thinks. Let's say what he says. I love saying this. I might have repeated this again already, but when God created heavens and the earth, he said, light be. He expected for the word to come out. He expected for the word to go there and create that light. The word did not come back to him and said, hey, sorry, God, I couldn't create the light. No, he expected for it to go and create the light and come back to him and said, God, the, the light is created. It's done. That's the expectation. So do you guys expect something when you say it or you just saying it? So let's learn to take God's medicine daily. Let's take his word daily. Let's take his mind daily. Let's walk daily, not just on Sundays, not just on Wednesday prayer meeting. Daily. Let's open our houses daily. Let's open the word of God daily. Let's go on our knees daily you know with me and my brother Alex were talking and our knees are not so used to being on our knees our knees are not callous they're not hard enough to withstand five minutes let's train our knees to stand daily I remember when I was in New Jersey and Andre over here, he remembers our um, Devivite. He was teaching us how to play guitar. I remember the first week my fingers were in pain, but they were so soft. But he says, until they become hard, you won't be able to play as good. Let's practice every day, practice made those fingertips hard so I can press those notes, those strings in proper timing. The, the more I learned, the more, the faster it will start moving. So same thing with God. The more you're going to be in His presence, the more you're going to read His Word because it is alive. Don't think that the book that you read is just the words. That book is alive because it says in John 1, and the Word became flesh. That Bible is a person. It's a person. It's not a book. It's not a paper and ink. It's a person. So talk to it just like a person. I want to, I know there's, there's worries, there's fears. There's pains, there's misunderstandings in life today. And you know the word says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Don't forget it says no weapon formed, so it's going to keep on forming and forming and forming. But she'll never prosper. Why wouldn't it prosper? You know the secret? You want to hear the secret? The answer or not? If you stay behind the word, you're never going to prosper because the word will set you free. Because he became the word and the word became flesh. Jesus Christ is word. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So if you guys have ears and you feel like you're defeated, remember that he is all the way around you. Proclaim, say it with your mouth. Don't just think it. Proclaim it. I am free. I am redeemed. I am forgiven. I am son or daughter of God. I am a child of God. He loves me. He loves me. I am the body of Christ. And Satan has no power over me. 
for we overcame evil with good. I am so God in heaven, overcame Satan. For greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Proclaim those words. Remind Satan who he's dealing with. Remind him that he has lost. Remind him that he cannot do anything unless you give him the opportunity. Don't give him a opportunity. You know the word says, don't give the foothold. I'm imagining this door and you open it. Where the foot can fit through the door crack, that's the foothold. Don't even give him that opportunity. Keep the door closed away from your, your life. I will fear no evil, for you are with me, Lord. Your word and your spirit, they comfort me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you start being in his presence, when you start talking to him, when you start reading, when you pray, imagine that he is talking to you through that word. It's great. Proclaim these words, I am far from oppression. I am far from fear. And fear does not come near me. Why? Why does it come near me? Because I know who's behind me. I know who's in front of me. I know who's on the sides of me. I know. I know. I know who was who took my sins, who took my condemnation who took my sicknesses, who took my poverty, and put it on the cross. I know who did it. I know who did it. I am delivered from the evil of this present world, for it is, for it is the will of God. So I am delivered. God has delivered me. God has delivered me. Not my strength, not my ability, not my going to church, not my ways of living. God has delivered me. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, I thank you for your presence here. You're, we are so honored to have you here with us. We're so honored. Nothing can touch me. Nothing can touch me. Nothing. And according to your riches and glory, you shall supply all of my needs. According to your riches and glory. In Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. A praise report. You are welcome to come over here. Don't be shy. We're a family here. We're a family, so we praise you, Lord. Hallelujah.
kill them. So, along the same lines as what Pastor Alex was saying about how he was beginning with good work in us to see it through to completion. We look in Galatians chapter 6, starting at verse 7, it says, Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Yeah, so along the way, it can be easy to become discouraged if things don't look the way that we thought they were when God called us out. When he called us out onto the water, like when he called the apostle Peter out onto the water and said, come. You know, things may not always look the way that we thought. They may not always look good. They may not always feel good. But as Galatians chapter 6 admonishes us, we must not grow weary in doing good. It promises us that we will reap if we do not lose heart. And the important part about this day in and day out walk as, as a Christian, you know, we, some of us, you know, we might have part-time jobs, full-time jobs, but this walk as a, as a, as a Christian is a full-time 24-7 thing. We never take a vacation. We don't take any time off. There's not a minute that we can go, oh, I'm not going to be a Christian right now, but in five minutes I will be. No, this is a 24-7 thing because of the word corruption in verse eight actually means, if you look up in the concordance, one of the definitions of it is decay. When we sow to our flesh through carnality and spiritual laziness, oh, I'm not going to get up early to pray today. Sowing to my flesh. Oh, I'm not going to read the word today. I'm sowing to my flesh. I'm literally decaying spiritually. Like a body would decay if it wasn't alive anymore. So it's so important for us not to allow our flesh to rise up, we constantly have to crucify it. We constantly have to beat it down and not give in to its desires to, to lay around and be lazy and not pray and not read the Bible and not fast, not get up early to seek his face. Because if we do, we will, as Galatians chapter 6 tells us, we will literally decay spiritually. So a big part of, of not growing weary and doing good, because our flesh will grow weary. Our flesh is the one that goes, oh, this looks terrible, I quit. God told me to do this thing. It doesn't look good, so I'm just going to quit. I'm going to go back to whatever I was doing before. It's our flesh. Our spirit is always one. So as we walk it out, as as the Lord works on us and, and processes us and, and, and molds us and shapes us and completes that work that he begun in us, we have to stay, we have to keep our spirit man built up and not allow ourselves to get over into the flesh because our flesh is going to desire to quit at the first sign of trouble. So we're like, oh, God can't do it. He's not able. But our flesh is always willing. Our flesh is where our faith is. Our natural mind and our, our, our spirit is where our faith is. Our flesh and our natural mind has no faith at all. It can only go off what it sees and, and feels. It might have faith when it sees a manifestation of promise. When it sees what God, oh, God did it. Oh, praise God. You know, you know it'll have faith then. But until that point, it has no ability to have faith at all. So we have to constantly do everything we can day in and day out to stay in the spirit, stay in prayer, stay steadfast in prayer, stay steadfast in the word. Because otherwise, over time, we will decay spiritually if we do not do that. So we must not allow ourselves to grow weary in doing good for it. Scripture tells us that we will reap. In due season, we will reap if we do not lose heart. So I desire that was on my heart. I desire to, to encourage y'all and admonish y'all with that because that's that's been on my heart and in my own life. So hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'd like to share one experience I had this week, and I'm pretty sure many of us experienced something similar. So for me, it was in the form of a dream. So in the middle of the night, I have this dream, and I hear knocking, and it was knocking on my door, and immediately I woke up, and I discerned, okay, I know who's knocking, that's the Holy Spirit, that's Jesus, time to get up and fellowship, and I did not want to go back to bed, I tried, <laughs> I rolled over, and I'm like, oh, but you know, my mind is telling me, you should get a couple more hours of sleep, you went to sleep late. 
and I could not fall asleep, and I got up and um, just repented for not immediately getting up, first of all, and then prayed and just allowed his presence to come in. Because sometimes the Lord, he will wake up, wake us up at night. Sometimes there might be a knocking. We can audibly hear it. We can hear it in our dream, maybe. It can um, just be pressed on our heart. Like, he's calling us. Come out and fellowship with me. Have a conversation with me. I miss you. And that's who he is. He's so great that you don't need to wait until a fellowship, a body of believers with you. You don't need to wait until church on a Sunday or some people go to church on a Saturday. You respond when he calls you. There's a grace when you respond to that knocking. And what I mean by grace is that there's that ability. Like for me, I immediately did not want to go back to sleep. My mind tried to fight me. Like, no, you should. And I was fine <laughs> by not going to bed. So I wanted to encourage somebody here. If you hear a knocking, if you have a dream, him knocking. Like literally, just, you know, it, respond to it. Respond to it. He says, if you open the door, I knock. Whoever opens the door, I will come in and dwell with them. Be blessed. Amen. Yeah, that be nice. All right, I had the honor to, to pray over the... I can say the price to have the faith. We're just gonna just I give a couple of minutes to think about what what has happened because that's not just uh, the man just died on a cross and you know, he said he emptied out the whole heaven to let the glory and we still no clue what kind of glory he left but when God we're gonna saw what he did what he left wow. But for us, because he, he when, when the God, actually, let's go back. I read today Genesis about the Abraham and Isaac. When they go to the mountain to do sacrifice, <laughs> the Lord already prepared the sacrifice. But he wait till the moment. Okay, so for me, this really like, important things because when when I do this for myself, the Lord always wanted to see my heart, so I can bring my sacrifice. And we we think like, oh, you know, there's always somebody gonna pay the price. No, the Lord waiting for us. You want to say, hey, bring your sacrifice. I'm ready to prepare for you. It's going to be way, way more than you can imagine. You know. So when we come to this communion, I want to like, you can you can feel you can like bring the sacrifice and and say thank you because what the Lord wants from us is attention, patience, obedience, time. So bring me that, put it in the altar. Because I'm ready to prepare something more than that. But I need to respond from you. I want to see how you're going to respond to that. So when we're going to do that, just be thankful. That God paid my bigger price. My bigger price. And not just because we're going to be Christian, so we can just hang out. No. So we, we can become the son. And His glory can be on us and in us. Because He wanted many sons. Yes. That's why the one son has died, so they can many sons can yes. arrive. Amen. And His and the Lord said, "That's my uh, earth, right? And it's full of my glory. Mm -hmm. And His glory go through the sun. So when we walk to the places, work, businesses, grocery items." We bring His glory. We carry His glory. 
So don't forget to give all the glory to God. Yeah. Never try to put on yourself. <laughs> no, we're not not even close. We, we cannot handle that. Yeah, it's too heavy. Yes, <laughs> it's too <laughs> heavy. <laughs> so that's really important for us. Yeah. Okay. So we and we can when we're gonna do that, we tell the hell you lose and we walk in the victory. Amen. We just gonna Hallelujah. remind them, hey, glory. We walk in the victory. Amen. Yes. So that that dude, or whatever he is, <laughs> need to remind them where he's playing. Okay. Yep. And remember the prophecy when the God first time he reminded the devil about uh, Jesus, Genesis three fifteen said, and he will crush. You. <laughs> he, he just he's just gonna destroy you. So, and that's why we're gonna celebrate. Yes. And then the prophets, I think, uh, I don't remember where, but it said, when he, the Jesus, when he defeated the devil, grabbed him, he just dragged him over the lake. The whole heaven. Everybody see that? Yep. That loser. That's where my Judah said. <laughs> he's, a, he's a loser. He's a loser. <laughs> he's a loser. So we're gonna celebrate. This is this is this is celebration today. Hallelujah. And we're gonna tell him again, you're a loser. You're like nobody. And he don't have any like space in our life to manipulate us, to tell us what to do. Yeah. Because the son set free. Free indeed. And we're walking in freedom. Enjoy your yes. life in freedom in Jesus Christ. So let, let's just pray. Yeah. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the plan you did for us. And you just you knew that's gonna happen. That's why you were ready to prepare the sacrifice before you create the whole earth. And we thank you. Thank you. Let us understand how important that for us. Holy Spirit, remind us, show us. And we thank you for that moment we have so we can come with the brother and sister together Lord yes and we just said thank you thank you we thank you for the healing yes we thank you for the restoration yes we thank you for the freedom and mm -hmm. liberty yes Lord and and more important we thank you for the Holy Spirit yes. who dwells inside of us hallelujah and you call us some yes. thank you hallelujah Lord, Lord bless Lord. This communion, Lord, and we say thank you again and again for the mercy, for the love, for the Jesus Christ, for the victory. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 All right. Yes, we're just gonna pass it. Yeah. Just the way his body was broken. In Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for your body being broken for my healing. Jesus. And this juice, grape juice, represents his blood that was shed on a cross. For my salvation, for my soul to be where it's supposed to be, in the presence of God. By this representation, I am cleansed, I am free, I am free indeed. And in Jesus' name, we thank you, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Him. Praise Him and worship. So I had a little vision, or night vision, or it could be a dream. I was sleeping and. I think it was even up or sleeping. I was in the middle of my situation. <laughs> and uh, I saw a black panther sitting on, a, on his legs and like a dog sitting. Picked up his 
Put this on the side right now. Let's figure out tomorrow. There's a plan. So I came to him and said, Daddy, my toy broke. It's big. Big boys have big toys, but Daddy, my toy broke. Really? That's what I said. That's the only thing I said. I know he got me. He got me. I don't have to worry about it. So let's establish that. No? Not mine? It's mine. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, want to bless you. We thank you, every one of you, for coming out. I thank the Lord for being here with us. This is great. This is great. Seriously. It is such an honor to have all of you. I haven't seen some of the people for a while. My dear friends right there, Andre and Ola, thank you for coming out. It means a lot to me. It's great to see you. It's great to see each and every one of you, my neighbor. Hi. My dear friends, brothers and sisters, mighty men and women of God. Hallelujah. Let's stand up and pray. Them. And we can have some food. We can sit down and have fellowship. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, I thank you. I am redeemed I am forgiven. I am yours. Hallelujah. We bless you. We bless your name. We thank you for the opportunity. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for resurrection. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Amen.